more folks than ever are taking up the art of gardening. I get a lot of questions about gardening, and the first thing I recommend is the organic gardening method, because when we build up the soil humus, we can prevent problems later on with diseases, bugs, and soil compaction. We want to build up the soil humus. Organic gardening means building up the organic matter in the soil. This garden was a pasture last winter. I like to flip the soil over in the fall and leave it rough plowed. The freezing and thawing over the winter breaks up those clods and loosens and mellows the soil. It's often too wet to plow in early spring and the grass loves to grow in the spring. So it's better to take care of that in the fall, otherwise it's harder to get rid of. A black spot on the blossom end of a tomato is called blossom end rot. And this is an indicator that your ground needs lime. We have to use lime because calcium leaches out of the soil with the rains and is also removed when we take off the crops. Farmers spread lime at the rate of one to two tons per acre. This works out to be about 50 to 100 pounds for a thousand square feet, which is a garden 20 feet wide by 50 feet long. Another good source of calcium and also potassium are wood ashes. Plus, they have trace elements. Wood ashes are sprinkled on rather thinly because they're very alkaline. Plan your garden before you plant it. Seed catalogs and seed packets have lots of useful information on them about how far apart to space your plants and also the times to plant them. But even at eight foot centers, you may not want to plant pumpkins next to your watermelons. All the rows in this garden were set at four feet apart and they looked like they were way too far apart at first, but you can see how they've all grown together. It's easier to change the row on a piece of paper than it is once it's planted in the garden. Don't plant your garden all at once. Successive planting is when you plant every three weeks the same crop so that when the first crop peters out, you have a new crop coming in. For example, these beans and squash were the first plantings and they're about gone. They're in their full production right now, but they're about gone. Over here we have a new planting of beans and a new planting of squash that will start producing about the times the old ones peter out. In gardening, there's no substitute for good compost. Gardens need farms around. Find a farmer and get some manure, some hay, go to the forest and get some leaves or find the bag leaves that people give away on the roadsides. Layer this all together and keep it damp. Don't forget to put soil in it, either garden refuse or just shovelfuls of soil. We want to make a real good compost. We have to keep it damp and let it set for several months. It, when it turns black and crumbly and smells earthy, it's ready to apply. We put it on at the rate of about a ton for a thousand square foot of garden area. The places where farmers feed out these rolls of hay eventually make a real nice black humus compost that oftentimes they'll let you have. Soil structure is extremely important, which is why I don't like rototillers. The constant rotating of the tines beats the soil up too much, and when it rains, the ground compacts. I much prefer the implements that run through the soil lengthwise. When we're working our ground, we can just run the rebreakers and implements like that this way, and maybe crossways, and take a few days. Don't be in a hurry. We, we have plenty of time to get the ground ready for planting. Another way to improve soil structure is by growing cover crops. For example, buckwheat is a great summer cover crop. Over winter, we use crimson clover or maybe winter wheat with hairy vetch for winter cover crops. The buckwheat and other things like cow peas or soybeans are used for cover crops during the summer. They're killed by the frost. 
We want to work the ground when the moisture is right. If you can pick up a handful of soil and squeeze it, when you drop it, it should shatter. Then you know the ground is dry enough to work. If we work the ground too wet, it forms clods and it's not good. We hoe the ground after every rain to break up the crust. This creates a dust mulch on top of the soil and keeps the soil underneath nice and moist. If the ground gets hard and weedy, bugs will come to the rescue to make humus. Unfortunately, they do this by eating our plants. We can rub these squash bug egg clusters off of the little squash leaves while we're working. It's important to be in your garden and be observant. Mulching helps by smothering the weeds, conserving the soil moisture, and it eventually turns into humus and organic matter. Farms oftentimes have old hay. We like to put it on real thick. Please don't feed the animals. Deer, raccoons, and groundhogs love gardens. So put up an eight foot fence, keep the deer out. You can also grow gourds and climbing beans along it. Raccoons can be taken care of with an electric fence close to the ground, and groundhogs can be trapped using vegetables for bait. We want to keep the produce picked. Once a plant makes mature seed, the life force wanes. We want to keep the summer squash picked young and the plants will produce for much longer. Extra produce is a good way to meet your neighbors and church groups and other community organizations are helpful in distributing food to people in, around that need it. And everyone loves a bouquet of flowers. Tennesseans can grow all their own food. They have in the past and they certainly will in the future. Preserving farmland near cities makes a lot of sense because the farms can provide gardeners with manures and hay and other farm resources that the home gardener needs. Besides the health benefits of fresh garden produce, gardening is great exercise. It's peaceful to be in the fresh air out in the garden. We're improving the soil and appreciating the wonders of nature. And a beautiful garden, like a beautiful piece of artwork, is pleasing to the soul.